Good afternoon, <clears throat> and welcome to a candidate forum featuring candidates for City Council District 6. I'm Paula Lee, a member of the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County, and I'll be moderator for today's forum. This forum today is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. The forum is being viewed live by an audience in the Sacramento County Board of Supervisors, Chambers, and by a live cable television audience at home. It's also being taped for rebroadcast on Metro Cable Channel 14. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization of women and men. We're established to promote political responsibility through informed, active participation of citizens in government. The League does not support, oppose, or evaluate any political candidates or parties. Although our nonpartisan policy does not permit us to endorse candidates, we do, after careful study, take positions on political issues. The format for today's forum will be as follows. Each candidate will make a one and a half minute opening statement. Next, the candidates will respond to questions from our expert media panel. And then the questions uh, are submitted, that were submitted were also reviewed by league members. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to each question. And then finally, these candidates will have two minutes for a closing statement. Now I'd like to introduce the candidates who are running for District 6. The candidates are Mitch Netto on Good my right. Good afternoon. And Kevin McCartney. McCarty. McCarty. Thank you. <laughs> Sitting on our expert media panel, are Foon Ree from the Sacramento Bee, Cosmo Garvin from the Sac News and Review, Definitely. and Pia Lopez from the Sacramento Bee. Definitely. Thank you so much to all of you for participating in the forum. We're going to begin now with opening statements, and we'll begin with Mitch Netto. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I wanted to just state a little bit about myself. Um, for those of you who don't know, I've been a resident of the Elmhurst neighborhood for over 17 years. I purchased there many, many years ago when the neighborhood was up and coming at that point. I'm a business technology and efficiency expert, and I have been working in the Sacramento area from Hewlett Packard, Sutter Health, on both east and west coasts for Hewlett Packard um, since the inception of my career. Um, I am coming to you today as a candidate for the office, as a citizen that wants to work in the city of Sacramento, for the city of Sacramento, for the public. Thank you. And Kevin McCarty? Thank you, and thank you to the League for hosting this uh, forum once again. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk why I'm running for re-election. In, in some, it's the same reason why I ran eight years ago to serve my hometown here of Sacramento, to, to make a difference in the community where we're raising our family, and to bring about positive changes in, in this city. You know, when I sat in this chair, actually that chair eight years ago, I talked about wanting to fight for our neighborhoods, being a problem solver, expanding opportunities for our youth, and being a good uh, fiscal steward for our city. And I'm proud of my work on each of these issues over the past eight years. Uh, I've, I've wrote uh, tough laws to hold absentee landlords accountable, cleaning up over 15,000 properties to date. I wrote successful common sense gun ordinances to help our police get illegal guns off, in the, off the streets, resulting in over 230 guns removed to date. Uh, for our youth, I've created after school programs, uh, summer programs, uh, truancy prevention and college outreach efforts, which have become the models for other cities and jurisdictions. Uh, as far as uh, fiscal issues, I, I've continued to ask the tough questions at City Hall on budget issues and make sure I'm focusing on accountability and oversight. And with this, I'm focusing on the same, same type of energy. In addition, um, I want to be able to make sure we look for innovative ways to, to create uh, jobs here in our community. I'm proud of my Clean Energy Sacramento program we're about to launch this, uh, this year. And on the budget front, I will continue to make sure we're focusing on the right priorities for the city of Sacramento, which are zeroing in on our key city services. Thank you. Okay, the first question, Foon Ree, would you direct it to um, Mitch Netto? 
Sure. Thanks very much. Um, so let's start with a, a, a general type question. Um, what is the single biggest issue specifically facing District 6, and what would you do about it on the City Council? Well, I think the single biggest issue at this point is the lack of police presence. Um, we're currently, um, our, our crime has gone up considerably in the last few months. Um, the lack of officers being able to come, we're hearing from people that they can make a phone call, police aren't able to show up for four hours because they're just that shorthanded. Um, and I believe that, that that public safety is probably our biggest concern at this point. I also think that, you know, the way the city is looking at certain items, such as the pools, and which is a huge community service in our area, um, I don't think that they're looking at the way that the, they are looking at the situation the way it should be. We have the third largest use pool in our district that's not slated to be reopened. And I can't understand why the city would look to that pool as not a primary subject because it is a third use, highest use in the city. Kevin McCarty. Thank you. I think the biggest issue for District 6 is probably the biggest issue for the city of Sacramento and that's the decline in city services. You know, our city workforce has shrunk by about 20% in the last four years. Um, we have rolling brownouts of fire stations. Our, our police uh, pop teams don't exist anymore and our parks and recreation departments have been slashed. You know, our parks department used to be $30 million four years ago, now it's $8 million, and it has a big impact on the quality of life in our neighborhoods. And so I think the biggest issue that we need to be focusing on is our core city services and zeroing in on, on budget solutions, um, common sense budget solutions to, to bring back these uh, services. And I, I know we're gonna have some follow-up questions, I assume, on the budget, and we'll get there in a second. But um, it's not enough just to maintain our city services. I think uh, more and more we need focusing on restoring our city services in the, in the city of Sacramento and in District 6. And the next question, uh, Cosmo, could you direct it to Kevin? Uh, sure. So as you know, the city council may place a measure on the November ballot to create an elected charter commission. So I want to ask each candidate um, whether they favor the creation, uh, not, not just putting it on the ballot, but actually how they would vote on that measure if it was on the ballot. Um, is it too expensive to create a, a charter commission at this point? Are there any, is there anything in the charter you think needs to be looked at and possibly changed? Sure. That's yes, to you, Kevin. Correct. I, think first. Uh, I support that idea. I actually brought it up at, at City Hall a few months ago at a city council meeting. And I think the issue of our charter reform and the strong mayor has been a big distraction. And I think we ought to take a chance to vote on something one way or the other. And, and I think this issue and this opportunity is more intriguing than the alternative because the state of California and the government code outlines two ways to update your city charter. You can have the council draft a plan and or the mayor and put on the ballot, or you can have an elected charter commission process. Uh, the council and the mayor drafting it, I, I, I thought it was, a, it, it was the, the wrong approach. It was a backroom draft written by political consultants, lawyers, and pollsters, and it was the plan that was prescribed by, by, by the mayor and his team. Whereas the Charter uh, Review Commission, uh, Charter Reform Commission, is a state process which is from the ground up. So it's essentially a mini constitutional convention which allows legal and voters, common cause, citizen groups all around Sacramento to take a holistic look, look at our city charter and looking at ways of updating it if necessary. Mitch Neto? Um, on the city charter, um, I, I think that the city has some changes that need to be made, yes. Um, I do think that the city council and the staff that we have is capable of doing that and bringing it to a vote for the public. I don't believe that we need to go out and spend any more money at this point. We are currently in a very strong or very deep financial hole, and it seems to be growing on a daily basis. And I think that the formation, financial drain on the city is just not something we can seed at this time. I believe that we have the right people in place, and they should be able to do their jobs, setting policy for the city and then bringing it to the public vote. And Pia Lopez, would you direct the next question to Mitch? Mitch, in the last two decades, uh, Sacramento's jobs have been focused mostly on state government and the construction industry. Can you talk a little bit about what your district can do to help diversify the economy? And specifically, can you talk about the role of Sacramento State, the UC Davis Medical Center, and perhaps the food and agriculture industry in the region? 
Well, I think that we, as, as District 6, have a lot of things going for us at this point. Um, we have SARTA. We have the um, uh, alliance over on Power N. The ultimate crux here, what it comes down to, is that the city can grow its way out of it, the current problems that it has. It doesn't have the ability to tax and cut its way out. As we move forward, we have the ability to have many new businesses over in the Power N area. As you know, Sacramento State is moving its entrance over to the Folsom area, the Folsom Boulevard area. And I believe that with the, that move and with some of the other challenges that are currently facing our area with development, we can actually spark economic development. And by doing so, increase the city's take in taxes. Kevin McCarty. Uh, thank you. I think we're all very clear that not just state government, but government jobs and real estate have been our bread and butter for, for, for decades, and we need to focus on ways to, to branch out from that. And I think we need to focus on what we realistically can and can't do. Uh, I'm looking at ways where we can look for innovative opportunities to look into uh, emerging uh, job fields and economic development opportunities that, that are happening throughout the nation and here in California. Certainly, uh, the hospital and health professions are, are, are a booming industry, as are the clean energy and clean technology. In my district on Stockton Boulevard, uh, I am excited working with UC Davis as they look to double the amount of employees that work on that campus in the next 10 years. I think that has a great opportunity for Sacramento. Over on the Power In area, which Mitch no, uh, noted, there's an area that we've uh, de designated called Innovation Village. And what we're doing is trying to do a specific land use plan there, make it shovel ready, get all the entitlements ready. So when we have some of these clean energy and tech companies that want to locate in the area, we think this is a prime site right next to Sac State, right next to SMUD, near light rail, a smart growth site. And so we think we need to prime the pump for that. Funri, next question for Kevin McCarty. Thanks. Um, you've both mentioned the uh, budget issues that the city is having and the cuts in services that the city has made over the last few years. Um, this year, the city manager is proposing um, to avoid some of those cuts, uh, requiring um, public safety workers and other city employees to pay more into their own retirements. Do you support that strategy? and? Um, more broadly, what should the, uh, the role of the city council should uh, be in collective bargaining? Sure. Um, I do support what the city manager is talking about. I think he phrases it as there's a tough way and a better way. The, the way he's talking about is not easy. It is still tough. It, it would still be a reduction in employees' uh, wages. But I think that pension reform is something that uh, our community and all across you know, our state, frankly, are looking at, and we, we, we don't have any opportunities to cut anymore. I do know that it's a collective bargaining issue, and so the council can't, um, you know, jam it down uh, without having some give and take. So I think what the council can do is have some gentle conversations and discussions encouraging this type of dialogue, but it's not our, our decision. Um, also, I think that it's a critical issue because the council is increasingly looking at the possibility of putting a measure on the ballot to talking about increasing revenues to pay for services. And if we do have this pension reform and having these concessions for some of our employee groups, I think the electorate will be more interested in focusing on um, increasing revenues to, to pay for bringing back city services. Mitch Neto? Um, that's a very interesting question. I, I believe uh, being a public employee for the last five years, um, I understand this probably a little bit better than some. And I can tell you what is is what was, I mean, what was is what was, what is is what is. We're in a different world today. I believe that we need to sit down with each one of the bargaining groups and they need to pay their fair share. I absolutely believe that if you're going to have your retirement, we shouldn't be paying both halves of that. Um, I, when I was interviewed by the police, the SPOA, that was a question that came up with me and I explained it very clearly to them, as I will today, is that there has to be changes in reform. There has to be changes. It's not affordable the way it is. It's not sustainable. Thank you. Next question, Cosmo, could you direct to Mitch Neto? Sure. Uh, Mr. McCarty mentioned the possibility of some sort of tax measure on the ballot that the council may put on there. Um, I'd like to get your, the, each of your thoughts on that. Uh, do you think a sales tax or a parcel tax uh, would be appropriate sometime maybe this fall? Um, 
if if you do support that, would would a measure like that compete with a measure from Sac City Schools? Um, you know, which services would get funding from that kind of measure if you thought that was uh, the way to go? Well, at this point, I don't think that the city can afford it. I don't think the citizens of Sacramento can afford it. And putting a, a $100 tax is what I've heard on every parcel doesn't make sense to me. I think that we can deal with the budget crisis that we currently have by dealing with re pension reform, looking at an overall cut to the entire city's staff's pay if we have to by a percentage point. There are several other ways to bring that budget crisis down and make it affordable. I do not, do not see any more taxing and trying to put temporary band-aids on things. Kevin McCarty? You know, I've been on the front lines of this issue for, for four years and we've cut over $100 million from, from our budget and there really isn't much more to cut. And people out there in the community are saying they want both pension reform to basically maintain city services and they want to talk about putting a measure on the ballot to restoring city services. So what I think about this is it's democracy. It's not up to me, it's not up to Mr. Netto, it's up to the electorate. And so if we as a council think that we can provide a, a measure that people could vote on if they want to assess themselves, whether it's a, a, any type of tax out there, you, you, we can take a look at which ones are the most viable. But the reality is, is that the only way to really take a look at um, bringing back some of our city services in the near term, uh, we need to focusing on uh, alternative ways. And I think we've been talking about this for the last three or four years, and this is a year with the election coming in November that I think the council will finally uh, take a really hard look and I would think uh, re really consider putting something on the ballot, and I would support that. And Pia Lopez, next question for Kevin McCarty. Kevin, what role do you see for civic amenities, the arts, music, science, museums, theaters, and parks in the city of Sacramento? And in these difficult budget times and difficult economic times, what role can and should the city council have in making sure that those are stable and um, improved over time? Well, in order to be a great city, and whether it's a world-class city or a phenomenal city or just our, our, my hometown of Sacramento, I think you know these type of amenities are important. And you know, you look at what we did over here at the Crocker a few years ago, it's, it's a phenomenal asset to our community and the region. And I think that we as the city of Sacramento look, need to look for, for ways how we could invest in some of these amenities. So we're talking about the B Street Theater expansion, certainly let's talk about you know, an arena downtown, but there's a, there's a, there's a plethora of, of, of things that we're talking about doing um, throughout the city. And I think, you know, if we want to make Sacramento a destination for, for people to come throughout the region, we need to look for ways post-redevelopment to put monies back into these projects, which could uh, stimulate economic growth and spur um, excitement here in the city of Sacramento. Uh, one idea that I've been talking about is, is, is our parking. Revenues. We know we looked at that to potentially fund the arena. Well, that's not there anymore. And one thing that we can maybe look at making more money from our parking, use half of it to focusing on our core city priorities, and the other half to maybe for innovative economic development things in the city of Sacramento. Mitch Netto? Well, I believe that arts, music, and the general constructive of those items are far more important than most people. Um, I have been a collector of art for many years. I experience it, I enjoy it, and it's one of those things that I think that adds culture to the city, it expands minds, and I think that these things have to be funded. As we have cut back in the schools years and years and years and years, these things are becoming further and further from our students. And I think that at any cost to the city, whatever funding we can find, needs to be placed in those areas. Culture should never be taken out of a society. Foon, your question for Mitch Netto? Sure, sure thanks. Um, so one basic service that residents care a lot about is garbage collection, and studies have shown that the way the city does it now is relatively expensive compared to um, other jurisdictions. There's a plan uh, before the city to uh, change collection so that recycling pickup would be um, reduced or um, bi-weekly rather than weekly, uh, that people be required to use green waste containers and that the claw would be limited to the fall leaf season. Do you agree with uh, that proposal? And if not, what would you do differently? Uh, I absolutely do not agree with it. Um, being the city of trees and living in 
Elmhurst, where I've, you know, like I said, I've lived for 17 years. I have too much to put in myself, and I have a smaller home and a large yard. Um, I believe that there was a plan put together by the College Green, Green neighborhood, which I would fully endorse at this point, which is having the claw once a month and not having green waste pickup. Currently, the city's trying to pick up everything on the same day. They tried to do garbage pickup, recycle pickup, the green waste, and the claw. It's a complete waste of time and money. It's not efficient. It doesn't work well. By changing the claw to one day a week, um, and, and there's other problems that have come along with it. As you know, or maybe you haven't heard, um, over in that neighborhood, um, spe spe specifically College Greens, um, they have a large odor now. These green waste cans are creating bacteria. That's being taken over there to a dump fill and left there, and then that odor is wafting into their neighborhood before it's traveled out. I don't think it's a good idea, and I would like to see the cans removed. Kevin McCarty. Thank you, Foon. That, that's really a two-part question. First, on, on the recycling, that's a, that's a thing we're voting on this summer. And, you know, I understand it's about saving costs, and I'm really trying to evaluate the impact as far as recycling. Our recycling rates are one of the lowest of major cities throughout Northern California. And I really need to make sure that if we go to every other week, we're not going to decrease the amount of recycling that we're doing, which is important to the environment, but also we need to adhere to a state law. As far as the uh, loose in the streets, the claw, you know, I think this is, again, what I talked about earlier, uh, direct democracy. You know, uh, the voters um, put a measure on the ballot in the 70s, and so when, we can't change it without going back to the voters. So go figure. You can't vote on the arena, but you can vote on the claw in Sacramento. So uh, this fall, uh, voters will be able to decide uh, for their own. So it's up to us as the city of Sacramento to craft what we think is, is, a, is a moderate proposal that focuses on the issues that really brings about uh, bringing down costs and, and talks about how we can bring about best practices for, for waste disposal and bring it to the voters and let them decide. Cosmo, this will be the final question before closing remarks okay. for Kevin McCarty. Um, Kevin, over the last four years or so, I've heard a lot about the supposed dysfunction of the city council, the inability of council members to get along or to work with the mayor. This has a lot to do with the council's rejection of uh, a certain policy initiatives by the mayor. Um, do either of you believe that there's too much disagreement or dysfunction on the city council? And if so, what do you do about that? Well, I think like in a government, any family, there's disagreements. I know I've said this and Mayor Kevin Johnson that we agree on 97% of the things. Uh, the one big thing we haven't agreed on is the strong mayor issue, and uh, that's going to continue to come up. Hopefully, we'll have a vote on that, and we can, we can move forward with that. You know, uh, some people have said, you know, you only uh, oppose the, the arena plan, McCarty, because the, uh, the mayor was for it. And I would like to remind them that I, that I didn't support the plan for the arena under Mayor Fargo. So it's not about the person. It's about the issue. It's about what makes sense for the city of Sacramento for our best dollars. Um, you know, I was actually pleased a few months ago uh, to go to the mayor's state of the city address. And he talked about two of his three priorities for the city of Sacramento. And uh, two of the three, uh, one was championed by me, the mayor and I are working out together, our Clean Energy Sacramento program, and the other one he's working on with Councilmember Fong. So the point of that is, is even though some of the council may disagree with him on the strong mayor issues, we put that aside and focusing on what's best for the city of Sacramento. So uh, in large part, the city business goes on. We're focusing on the issues at hand, and we, we bring about what's important for our communities. Mitch Neto. I've been watching the council for a number of years via TV and gone to several of the city meetings. Um, I completely believe at this time that they are dysfunctional. Um, one of the things that I think that I can bring to city council is a cohesive fiber. I would like to see the entire city council brought back together, much like they've done in other cities like Houston and other cities who have seen severe cuts to their economy where their deficit is large. I think that by bringing the city council back together as a single unit, as policy setters and not as micromanagers, and bringing them back together as a single unit, driving the mayor, moving the city forward, is the best opportunity that we have. I can do that. I have done it for Hewlett Packard. I have done it for other companies that I've worked for. And it's an important, important thing to me to make sure that it works as a single unit and not nine individual kingdoms where everybody's fighting for their toys. Okay, and now it's time for closing remarks. Uh, and for fairness, you were opening remarks. You had 
the first statement, so you will have the last word, and so begin, Mitch Neto. Today I'm coming to you today and asking for your vote. As a citizen, I think that we need to have a citizen back on city council. I'm not a lobbyist. We did not have lobbyist dollars. We were a very, very small individual group of myself. I started this on my own. I've been accused in the newspaper many times of being a Kevin Johnson crony. These are hilarious and funny to me because I've only met the mayor one time in my life. I did this because in the last two years, I have had a complete change in my life. My life has gone through some serious changes. I was recently in Africa and pulled a baby from a dump that was had its full umbilical cord attached. It moved me and changed every part of my life so that I am here today because I feel that the public service needs to have a voice. The citizens of the city need to have a voice and I am here as a citizen wanting to do what will move the city forward and help our city. Thank you. Kevin McCarty. Uh, thank you and thank you again to the league for, for hosting this uh, forum and uh, you know I asked my community in District 6 for your support for re-election. Uh, I'm proud of my record uh, serving my hometown here in Sacramento. I think I've been a proven leader an effective leader, a hardworking one and also effective uh, for my er, community and the city of Sacramento. I'm certainly uh, proud of my endorsements. Uh, the Sacramento Bee, our, our Sacramento teachers, our firefighters, our construction and trades, uh, our labor council. I'm, I'm proud that respected leaders like Doris Matsui and Dave Jones and Daryl Steinberg have seen my work and have, and have uh, pledged to support me once again. I'm proud that I have neighborhood association presidents from every neighborhood and leaders from every corner of District 6 who are supporting my candidacy, as well as business leaders from the Power Inn area, Stockton Boulevard, business groups like the Sacramento Association of Realtors know that I'm a common sense uh, consensus builder looking for ways to, to bring about good public policy for Sacramento. In my district, I'll continue to, to fight for uh, what's right and for solving neighborhood problems and looking for innov innovative ways uh, to make a difference. At City Hall, I'll continue to ask the tough questions when issues come before us and focus on the right priorities for our communities such as core city services. Uh, again, I'd be, I'd be honored to earn the vote of my constituents once again. I, I know that um, we have a lot of work that we've done, but I also know that we have a lot of work still to be done. And I'm looking forward to taking it uh, one more round. Uh, thank you, and uh, thank you again for hosting the forum. Thank you. And on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission, I thank you candidates. Thank you. Mitch Neto, Kevin McCarty for running for office. And I'd like to thank the panelists for excellent questions and all the volunteers who have made this forum possible. This forum has been designed to impart information to you, the voter, in accordance with our belief that good government depends upon the informed and the active participation of citizens. We hope that the insights you've gained from the forum will aid you in making your decision on June 5th. For vo voter information and the schedule for the rebroadcast of this forum and others, please visit the League website, smartvoter.org, or the League of Women Voters Sacramento County website, lwvsacramento.org. The League welcomes both women and men as members. And the League is where hands-on work to safeguard dem democracy leads to civic improvement. Thank you.